Council meeting. Madam Clerk, could you please call the roll to ascertain the presence of a quorum? Councilor Baker. Councilor Campbell. Councilor Siomo. Councilor Sabi George. Council Flaherty. Councilor Jackson. Council Lamatina. Council Linehan. Council McCarthy. Councilor O'Malley. Councilor Presley. Councilor Wu. Present. And Councilor Zakum. Madam President. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, I'd like to ask all counselors and guests to please rise, and I will turn it over to Councilor Linehan to introduce our faith leader for the day. After the invocation is delivered, please remain standing, and Councilor Linehan will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, thank you, Madam President. And uh, thank you, Friar Tom, for coming here today. Uh, Friar Tom Conway is um, he's the executive director of the St. Anthony Shrine here in uh, downtown. Uh, he's an alumnus of Siena College in New York. He earned his master's degree in theological study from Washington Theological Union. He joined the Order of Friars Minor in 1988, and he was ordained as a Franciscan friar in 2005. He's been a friar for over 25 years, a member of the board of directors at St. Francis House. So he's extremely active and always working the, some of the toughest neighborhoods and uh, enclaves in downtown Boston. He works with those who are most challenged in life, and uh, he's dedicated his life to, to serving our most needy and also our city of Boston. So without any further ado, Friar Tom Conway. Right. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor to be here, obviously. Um, I'll tell you three quick things that are happening at St. Anthony Shrine is uh, we have a we have a, a, a health clinic for homeless women on Thursday mornings, and we're expanding uh, opioid and addiction services for those women. Um, we're doing that with a partnership with the Boston Healthcare for the Homeless. Uh, Harvard Business School is doing a case study on us, a video case study, and what that is is uh, an examination of how a, an organization which has a reputation of being nice, makes hard business decisions. Uh, they're teaching the, to uh, uh, MBA students in uh, organizational behavior and in their strategy classes. Uh, this has a lot of potential, I think, to give nice exposure to Boston um, um, and to uh, sort of be a cutting edge. Uh, we're sort of trying to hold ourselves out as a, a cutting edge nonprofit that does innovative things. And uh, the Harvard Business School is picking this up you might be seeing some things in the media about this. We're getting, we're getting some nice feedback that folks are interested in this. So, uh, and then the last thing is we have, an, we have our annual gala on October 12th. We're honoring Tom O'Brien of HYM Developers. Um, we have lots of big name Catholics at that event, so you're very much invited. Be happy to have you um, at, as part of that. So we, we call ourselves to prayer, and, and we, we're especially just mostly grateful, right, for this wonderful opportunity to serve this, this amazing city. Uh, we're grateful for each other, for our good work, our goodwill. Uh, we're grateful for uh, all that God has given us. Uh, we're grateful that uh, we have these wonderful forums to, to get together and make decisions that affect so many folks in good ways. We're grateful for your service, especially, also. So we ask that today's deliberations be, uh, be thoughtful and kind and, and peaceful and humor-filled. Humor uh, may God be with you in all things. We ask this through the God who lives and moves among us. Amen. I pledge allegiance to indivisible Thank you, Friar. Thank you, Councilor Linehan. We will start with approval of the minutes from last week's meeting. Are there any changes or amendments? Seeing and hearing none, the minutes are approved. And Madam Clerk, could you please also mark that Councilor Presley is here? And on to communications from His Honor the Mayor. Docket number 0877, message and order authorizing the Public Works Department to accept and expend a grant of $6 million from the Massachusetts Department of Transportation for pedestrian, bicycle, and traffic improvements on Summer Street in the South, I'm sorry, in the South Boston Waterfront District. Docket number 0877 will be assigned to the Committee on 
Parks, Recreation, and Transportation. Docket number 0878. Message in order authorizing the neighborhood development to accept and extend a grant of $45,000 from the Harvard Business School to the Department of Neighborhood Development to support shaping housing policies and real estate projects that will improve the lives of Bostonians and shape the future of Boston's neighborhoods. Docket 0878 will be assigned to the Committee on Housing and Community Development. Docket number 0879, message in order for confirmation of the renewal appointments of constables authorized to serve civil process upon filing of their bonds for the period commencing May 1st, 2017 and ending April 30th, 2020. Chair recognizes Councilor Flaherty on docket 0879. Thank you, Madam President. Just move for suspension and passage. This is another one in the line, line that we've dealt with in the last few weeks uh, coming on the heels of Councilor McCarthy's hearing, and we got a commitment from uh, the commissioner with respect to the process moving forward uh, with his, the full multi-state uh, quarries and bops, what have you. So I uh, would like to move for suspension and passage at this time. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Flaherty. Councilor Flaherty moves for suspension and passage of docket 0879. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0879 has been passed. Reports of public officers and others. Docket number 0880. The constable's bonds of the following have been duly approved by the collector treasurer were received. Frico Damas, Randy Du, Alex McNeil, Fillmore Phillip. So similarly, um, chair moves for approval under the usual terms and conditions. These are the bonds related to constables that we have approved already. Uh, all those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Docket 0880 has been approved under the usual terms and conditions. Reports of committees. Madam Clerk, if you could read all three together, please. Thank you, Madam President. Docket number 0536, Committee on Ways and Means, to which is referred on April 12, 2017. Docket number 0536, Message and Order for Annual Appropriation and Tax Order for FY 2018, Smith Report recommending the order ought to be rejected without prejudice. Docket number 0537, the Committee on Ways and Means, to which was referred on April 12, 2017, docket number 0537, message in order for an annual appropriation for the school department for FY 2018, S submits a report recommending the order ought to be rejected without prejudice. And docket number 0538, the Committee on Ways and Means, to which was referred on April 12, 2017, docket number 0538, Message and order approving an appropriation of $40 million to the other post-employment benefits known as OPEB Liability Trust Fund, established under Section 20 of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 32B, submits a report recommending the order ought to be rejected without prejudice. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the Committee on Ways and Means, Councilor Siomo. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, to date, we have held 27 hearings amounting to over 56 hours of oral testimony on the fiscal year 18 budget. Uh, during this pro um, process, we have received extensive testimony from departments that have appeared before this body for hearings, as well as written testimony from departments that were not called in for hearings. Members of the public have also offered extensive written and oral testimony on various departmental budgets. In order to give us time to review and consider all of this testimony and to allow the administration to make any necessary adjust adjustments to the budget to reflect any updated information, such as recently passed collective bargaining agreements, I am recommending that docket numbers, dockets 0536, 0537, and 0538 be rejected without prejudice. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Councilor Siomo. Madam Clerk, please mark that Councilor Jackson is here. Would anyone else like to comment on these three budget dockets? Councilor Jackson, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, and I want to thank the Chair uh, for his hard work um, and uh, many meetings uh, to get us to where we are uh, today and also for the years uh, that he's put in um, in this space. Um, I think this budget is uh, deficient. Um, and uh, first, as chair of the Ed Education Committee, um, I find it uh, unacceptable that, again, uh, this year, the Boston Public Schools 
are going to be underfunded. Uh, $11 million is actually being cut out of 49 schools. Uh, and uh, most notably, Brighton High School, which is now a level four school, is getting a $1 million cut. The McCormick School is getting a $950,000 cut. Madison Park Vocational Technical High School, our only vocational technical high school in the city of Boston uh, that has also fallen down to a, a level four school, is receiving a $455,000 cut. That is unacceptable, and it does not show uh, the uh, investment that we should have in the young people in the city of Boston or the future of the economy uh, that we should have in the city of Boston. Uh, it is incumbent on, upon our body uh, to step up here um, and also uh, for the mayor's office uh, to step up and fund uh, what is our priority, what should be young people in the city of Boston. In addition, uh, I put forward uh, legislation uh, to have a uh, immigrant legal defense fund uh, that I believe the city should fund uh, some of. Uh, there are uh, many nonprofit uh, organizations as well as uh, organizations um, that are philanthropic uh, and uh, they would like to step forward on this. What we know is in the city of Boston, if we're going to have conversations about uh, immigrants and those who are un undocumented at the Boston Immigration Court, if you go there without a lawyer, you only leave 4% of the time. If you go with a lawyer, regardless of the merits of your case, you leave 49% uh, of the time. Cities like New York have actually put $5 million uh, towards this. Uh, Los Angeles, as well as Chicago, has invested uh, in that population. Um, in addition, and I want to thank uh, Councilor Zakum for his leadership um, in uh, putting forward a, a city-funded voucher program. Um, I believe it is critical uh, that, uh, especially post-closure of Long Island, uh, there are people who are still homeless. And if anyone, uh, and I drive up uh, Melnia Cass on a regular basis, um, I also uh, shop in that area. Uh, there are hundreds of people who are displaced still and are still homeless. Um, and for $5 million, uh, we would receive uh, 400 uh, city-funded uh, housing vouchers. Uh, which could help to stabilize uh, folks who have been displaced and uh, do right by uh, those uh, who are, were pushed off of that island uh, due to no fault of their own, Madam President. Um, in addition, uh, this budget also uh, represents uh, walking away from uh, the folks who are, uh, who are supported in Project SOAR and Safe Harbor, and some of them are in this room uh, today. Um, we have someone who sat right at this desk, who told us what was going to happen when the shelter was switched over. He said, I drive. I'm a chauffeur. I, I have really important customers, and I like my job. I enjoy the work that I do. I happen to be homeless, but I have a job, and I'm looking to get permanently housed. And about a week or a week and a half after, uh, and, and he noted to us, when the shelter goes to emergency status, that he would have to leave at 7 in the morning uh, and not be able to sleep. Uh, well, sadly, uh, not too long after he testified before this body, he actually got in a car accident on the mass pipe, and he lost his job. So we had someone who had stable work uh, but simply needed housing. Um, and I would note to you that the, the rapid rehousing program um, uh, with $3,600 for uh, first, last, and security, and to go out into the housing market that we have in the city of Boston is absolutely an unacceptable uh, and unrealistic uh, solution. Um, in addition, I believe that the summer job uh, program uh, is inadequately uh, funded um, and that uh, we need to ensure that all 5,000 of the young people who have not uh, uh, gotten jobs in, in the past um, and an additional 1,000 um, that, uh, would like jobs year-round, uh, should be funded. Um, I note that this budget represents a uh, net new revenue of $114 million. Those are dollars that we didn't have uh, last year. Um, and in addition, uh, there are uh, parts or, or pots of dollars, um, such as the parking meter fund um, that we all know about, and I want to thank uh, my, my buddy who sits next to me, who's, who's actually, since the day I got here, um, really uh, spoken to 
the, the need to actually use uh, those dollars and be more aggressive, uh, Council La Martina, in the use of those dollars. So I want to thank you uh, for uh, guiding my eyes and attention uh, to that. Um, it is critical uh, that this body uh, step forward and make sure that we take care of everybody uh, with the budget that we have. We, we don't have uh, all of the money in the world, but we definitely have uh, the dollars uh, to take care of our young people, to take care of those who are most vulnerable, and to take care of uh, individuals who are homeless, HIV positive, um, as well as those uh, who are struggling uh, with addiction. Uh, so today I will be following the chair and voting uh, against uh, this budget, and I look forward uh, to uh, the budget uh, returning to us uh, re uh, in, in a uh, fashion that uh, really looks like the values that we uh, uh, should be exhibiting for the city of Boston and the future of the city of Boston. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor Jackson. Councilor Zakum, you have the floor. Thank you, <clears throat> Madam Chair. I want to just thank uh, Chairman Siomo uh, and uh, central staff and his office staff who have done such a phenomenal job. And I think Councilor Sabi George is at all 27 hearings, if not very close. Um, at, it's, it's a daunting task, and it certainly is helpful for me and I think for all of us to have uh, Councilor Siomo uh, leading this process and putting that time in and making sure that our concerns are addressed department by department, program by program. Um, so I appreciate that, and I certainly um, think it's been very helpful. I would just add, uh, Councilor Jackson mentioned, the uh, city-funded housing voucher program, something that you and I, uh, Madam President, uh, suggested, I believe, two years ago uh, for the first time with the help of uh, the Mass Alliance of HUD tenants, some of whom are here today. Uh, I think it's incredibly important, particularly in the face of uh, a president in Washington who has uh, advocated basically eliminating all federal housing assistance that we need to look um, locally and do what we can given our limited resources. I would certainly hope to see a pilot program in this budget. I know in the past uh, we've heard from folks on the, uh, on the administration side that perhaps the CPA uh, money would be uh, an appropriate avenue for funding this, but I think it's incredibly important at a time when we have such need in the city, particularly we have several thousand Boston public school students who are homeless and their families to make sure that we have a pilot program uh, to get them into stable uh, and sustainable housing moving forward. So I, I hope to see that in the new budget. I look forward to continuing the review process, and I also will be uh, following our good chairman's recommendation on this one. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Zakum. Any other comments? Okay, so we will vote on each of these three dockets separately. First, the general operating budget, then the Boston Public Schools operating budget, then the OPEB Liability Trust Fund. Um, Councilor Siomo has asked me to clarify that uh, a yay vote will accept the committee report, which recommends rejecting without prejudice. So we're voting yes to reject, um, and a no vote would um, would essentially not accept the committee report uh, and and pass the budget theoretically. Um, so we'll start with docket 0536. All in favor of accepting the committee report to reject without prejudice, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say nay. The ayes have it, and the general operating budget has been rejected without prejudice. For docket 0537, BPS operating, all in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it, and the BPS operating budget has been rejected without prejudice. And finally, uh, docket 0538, OPEB liability trust fund, all in favor of the committee report say aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it, and the OPEB liability trust fund has been rejected without prejudice. Matters recently heard for possible action. Docket number 0760, an ordinance creating the Sanctuary School Act. Chair recognizes the chair of the ITR Education Committee chair standing. Is, is it is government operations, correct? Yeah. <laughs> chair recognizes chair of the government Sorry. operations committee. Sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for the lead sponsor for queuing me up here. But uh, we held a hearing uh, yesterday. Uh, and this uh, matter was sponsored by our colleague, City Council Tito Jackson. And the proposal would uh, prevent Immigration and Custom Enforcement, known as ICE, from entering Boston Public Schools unless they follow uh, specific procedures. So uh, we heard from several folks uh, at the hearing. We had three panels. Uh, we also learned about the current procedures that are in place for BPS in the City of Boston. Uh, it should be noted at the hearing, administration officials uh, had referenced some legal concerns uh, that the law department had, as well as some potential um, uh, possible jurisdictional issues uh, that I think need to be ironed out uh, before we can uh, move forward on this. But uh, as a result of that, I'd like to keep the matter in committee uh, for further action. 
but uh, through the chair, I would like to offer the lead sponsor an opportunity to uh, talk about last night's hearing. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councillor Flaherty. Councillor Jackson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. I just uh, also want to note that you actually uh, uh, co-sponsored the housing uh, legislation uh, last year. I, I uh, erred in not uh, acknowledging you. Um, I want to thank uh, Councillor Flaherty for expediting the hearing. I want to thank Councillor Zakem, Asabi George, O'Malley, and Presley for uh, being present. Um, a month it may not be a big deal in our time, but to families who are fearing uh, being uh, extracted from their schools as well as their homes and their community uh, at the long time. Um, uh, we unanimously passed a resolution, um, and I forwarded it to the uh, Boston School Committee. And it was my expectation that the school committee would actually act uh, to codify uh, this issue. That was brought uh, to my office by their students, uh, by uh, their parents, but really all of our students, all of our parents, and all of our community, um, and to listen to uh, their their voice. Um, the uh, language is actually tailored uh, from language that we received from our attorney general um, and direction that we have received from uh, the attorney general. And the current language uh, that BPS is using and actually read into the record is actually not uh, in alignment with uh, what our Attorney General has uh, indicated. And so uh, listening to parents as well as teachers and students um, uh, to me leads, uh, leads me to the conclusion um, that uh, it is incumbent on our body uh, to take courageous and bold leadership uh, when it comes to protecting people who are undocumented um, in school buildings. And I find it really interesting that ICE is now speaking to us and is now have, uh, going on record and saying that this is not what they do. Well, you know what? There's a bunch of things that they didn't do uh, before uh, November of last year. And those things are changing. Um, so I think it's really important uh, that we understand what's happened. And in places uh, throughout our country where there was a parent who was, um, who, uh, was stopped by ICE and taken into custody, um, I believe it was in California, it was a 50% drop in attendance the next day, 50%. Young people can't learn if they're not in school. And in addition, uh, teachers who don't have answers as to whether or not they can protect their students are not going to have uh, the ability to effectively say, you know what, you're going to be OK. You're going to be all right. And so I believe um, at this time, in a time of so much uncertainty, um, that I would ask this body uh, to think about uh, what we need to do to ensure that people are safe, what we need to do uh, to lead. And uh, the fact is, more important now than any other time in history is city government and is the uh, Boston City Council. Um, when we have a, a president as well as a, uh, uh, folks in D.C. who can't get it together, well, you know what? We're going to get it together here. We're going to lead and not follow on these issues, and we're going to protect our young people in the Boston public schools, and we're going to give their teachers who came here off the clock an answer that, yes, you are going to be safe while you're in that school building, because we know that traumatized young people who have anxiety can't, they can't pay attention. They can't do their work. And we don't even have uh, a nurse in every uh, school, Councilor Presley advocates for that on a regular basis, uh, to deal with the in increase in anxiety attacks um, that are going on in our schools. It is our job uh, to lead and not follow and to make sure that we protect the future of the city of Boston. Uh, and uh, I believe this legislation would uh, do that. I would also simply say, if the law department has an issue, they need to come here. They knew when, the, and we have to notice the hearing within a specific period of time. You knew. And so I find it uh, to be an unacceptable excuse to, to have it raised through other members of the administration, but not to address that, come downstairs and address that issue um, at, our, at our hearing. So I would call on uh, the law department to expedite whatever issues that they have, uh, get it to the chair as well as um, uh, myself as a, as a sponsor and, and or uh, the president, and let's get it on the table. Uh, but these young people can't wait and understand 
summer school starts in uh, a, a, a few short weeks. So this is not something that we can punt off uh, till September. It is something that we need to seize the day on uh, right now and to ensure that young people who need to be in schools uh, are, have the insurance that they are protected uh, in their school building. Um, and as noted from the uh, testimony, and I would encourage everyone to check it out, um, we are actually not in violation of uh, the current definition of sanctuary city um, uh, based on uh, Attorney General Sessions. And so we are, we are actually not uh, putting ourselves, um, excuse me, in financial harm's way relative uh, to the current definition um, and, and codifying this uh, based on uh, the most current information. Thank you, Madam President. Again, thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, for expediting this. Thank you, Councilor Jackson. Councilor Sabi George, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you to the maker for expediting yesterday's hearing. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to stay for the entire hearing, uh, but did catch up on at least piece of the pieces that I missed uh, yesterday. It is very clear that we have a lot of work to do to make sure that we are protecting our, our kids and our schools, and I look forward to that work moving along quickly in the, in the coming weeks and months ahead. But what I think is most important for us and, and a place that we can act quickly um, in conjunction with the BPS and the school committee is working to make sure that, our, that we do have a solid policy in place, that we are able to protect our kids as it stands right now, and that teachers and staff at our school buildings are adequately trained. As it is right now, staff in our school buildings do not know how to react um, if there were an incident at school, if federal authorities were coming into our schools. And, and we need to make sure that that information has been shared. And um, after yesterday's hearing and thinking about it overnight, and I articulated this during the hearing yesterday, is we need to put pressure on the school committee and on the school department to make sure that our schools, are, our, our school personnel are trained in this matter. And I look forward to um, getting a response from the school department on that request as soon as I send it in and to make sure that they are equipped at that school level. That is the, you know, the, the, where the rubber meets the road, where our teachers in our school buildings are in constant contact with our kids and giving them the tools and the resources they need to advocate for their children and to protect their kids is of the utmost importance while this other work continues alongside. So I commend the maker and, and thank the chairman for expediting yesterday's hearing and uh, look forward to continuing this work. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Sabi George. Docket number 0760 will remain in the Committee on Government Operations. Oh, oh apologies. You go back one, one second, Madam Clerk. Uh, Councillor Campbell on docket 0760. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure that my buzzer is working, so I apologize. Um, I just wanted to applaud the maker as well. I did when he introduced the order, um, as well as Councillor Flaherty for the expedited hearing. I unfortunately had a conflict and could not attend, um, but reviewed the, the tape. And I will say, um, I do think it's important that legal review this. Um, I think I had some legal concerns when it was first introduced, but I do think they should do it in an expedited manner. I will add, um, one of the biggest concerns that students, parents, constituents have is, is around the lack of policy and the lack of clarification as to what it means. And so I, I, I commend uh, Councilor Sabi George for um, taking the lead and sending a request to the school committee. Um, to get them to act a little faster. They should definitely be a part of this conversation and a part of this policy. Um, I will say that training is the biggest thing I think we can have an impact on, and I think we need to move quickly. Um, frankly, it doesn't take a long period of time, at least in the immediate, to equip teachers, staff, um, anyone who works with our students to be able to say to them and to each other exactly what we need um, and how they should respond to concerns that students are raising every single day and have been raising, frankly, since last year. Um, and frankly, I, I said this at um, the hearing when Councillor Jackson introduced the order, we did have a great hearing the first time uh, when he called for a hearing on this very issue. Um, and we asked the same questions that were asked last night. Um, and so hopefully BPS and the legal department respond a little bit quicker than they did previous. Um, so I just wanted to uh, echo the comments of Councillor Sabi George, thank Councillor Jackson, and thank Councillor Flaherty and apologize for not being able to attend last night's hearing. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Councilor Campbell. And Councilor Presley, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I also just want to rise and uh, thank Councilor Jackson for bringing this forward um, and uh, thank the chair for expediting the hearing and all the comments that have already been made and uh, the course of action that we have two parallel 
uh, track uh, in this endeavor, I concur with. I did just want to just, you know, add that, um, you know, something that hit me sitting in the hearing yesterday is that this is really no different than Title IX. Uh, in the same way within our schools, um, you know, people were working to uh, foster a school climate uh, where girls uh, would not feel discriminated. Um, you know, it's one thing to sort of have organic support or even symbolic gestures and signs that say zero tolerance or we're this kind of zone and all these sorts of things. The confluence of all those things matter. But ultimately, the endorsement and the mandate that you get through policy and legislation is what really um, uh, sustains a community. So even though colleges and universities, you know, every school environment was trying to be intentional about addressing these ways in which girls were being discriminated against and marginalized, it was only through Title IX saying, um, by law, you will have the sa be afforded the same opportunity. You will not experience harassment. You will not experience discrimination. And then later we added um, a sexual violence as well, because that is a civil right that people should feel, uh, and women disproportionately impacted by sexual violence, a safe in their own person and in their own body. And, you know, as I you know, said yesterday, you know, Dr. King once said that uh, laws don't change hearts, but they do restrain the reckless. And there is reckless activity happening in Washington right now. And so, you know, I just, again, commend the maker. And I think that although uh, Yeoman's uh, intentions um, are underway to make sure that um, our students do not feel vulnerable and at risk uh, and under sort of daily threat in this way, um, the way that we offer some real assurance is through uh, the mandate of policy. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Presley. And Councilor Jackson. All right. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much, uh, Madam President. I just want to uh, clarify that I've actually sat with the superintendent and spoken to him about uh, training. Um, but, uh, and I actually uh, asked the superintendent directly to put this on uh, the, um, uh, on the docket at the school committee. Um, this issue of training, uh, to me, we heard yesterday no teachers have been trained, um, and the over 120 school leaders in the city of Boston have actually only received a memo um, on these issues. And I've had those discussions with him directly, um, but the real issue, and as Councilor Presley just uh, brought up, is that we need to have something codified that we can actually let them, uh, let them know. Um, this policy or procedure, um, I don't believe, uh, currently uh, cuts muster. And what we heard read into the record yesterday, again, is not even in alignment with uh, what our attorney general has actually uh, put forward. Um, this would allow us to actually codify uh, these issues um, and to be able to move forward and to put um, some, some real uh, teeth into uh, the policy uh, that uh, we should have as a city as a whole. So I just want to um, make uh, uh, cl uh, clarify for the record um, that we've had some of those uh, conversations but the issue of, of uh, training is absolutely critical and important and urgent, um, but we actually need a policy to train people on that is clear. Um, and what we heard from teachers here yesterday is that there is not clarity in terms of what they're able to do or not able to do. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Jackson. Again, docket 0760 will remain in the Committee on Government Operations. Motions, orders, and resolutions. Docket number 0881, Councilor Zakem offered the following order. For a hearing regarding a medical marijuana dispensary at 331 Newbury Street in Boston. Councilor Zakem, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, folks may recognize the form of this hearing order. It's um, standard required under the current uh, regulatory regime from the state for medical marijuana dispensary to open. Um, as some of us may have heard, I was reading about it this morning and yesterday, the state is probably going to once again change the scheme for regulation of uh, both medical and now recreational marijuana. But in the meantime, um, a hearing and then a vote by this body is one required step in the approval process. Um, if this applicant is uh, given the letter of non-opposition from this body, they then go again to the State Department of Public Health for further review and ultimately uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeal here in the city of Boston um, to make sure that they are compliant with all regulations that's the appropriate location and operator. I personally have not come to a determination on whether this operator in this location is right, um, but I look forward to giving them a, a fair and open hearing here in this body and uh, either moving or not along with the process. But I uh, certainly expect to hear from neighbors, residents, other businesses in the area, and I look forward uh, to having a hearing on this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Zakum. 
Would anyone else like to comment? Seeing none, docket 0881 is assigned to the Committee on Planning and Development. Personnel orders. Docket number 0882, Councilor Wu for Council Linehan. Councilor Linehan moves for suspension and passage of docket 0882. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0882 has been passed. Docket number 0883, Councilor Wu for Council Linehan. Councilor Linehan moves for suspension and passage of Docket 0883. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Docket 0883 has been passed. Docket number 0884, Councilor Wu walks the following order. Chair moves for suspension and passage of Docket 0884. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Docket 0884 has been passed. Docket number 0885, Council Wu walks the following order. And Chair moves for suspension and passage of Docket 0885. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Docket 0885 has been passed. There are six late filed matters in the hands of the clerk, uh, all of which are personnel in nature, uh, and they will be added in the absence of objection. Hearing none, the matters are added. And Madam Clerk, could you please read the late files? Councilor Michelle Wu for Councilor Asabi George. Councilor Asabi George moves for suspension and passage of the first late file. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Uh, the first late file has been passed. Councilor Michelle Wu for Councilor Asabi George. Councilor Asabi George moves for suspension and passage of the second late file matter. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. You guys have it. Second late file has been passed. Councilor Wu for Councilor Jackson. Councilor Jackson moves for suspension and passage of the third late file matter. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. Ayes have it, and the third late file has been passed. Docket number. How many have I done? Three so far. Yeah. Oh, just three. Okay. So. Are there three other late we files? Two. Right. No, no, I know, but I just, I'm sorry. Some reason I lost count one. Did we do two for Councilor Jackson? Just one so far for Councilor Jackson. Sorry about that. Thank you. Councilor Michelle Wu for Councilor Jackson. Councilor Jackson moves for suspension and passage of the fourth late filed matter. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The fourth late file has been passed. Councilor Wu for Councilor Jackson. And Councilor Jackson moves for a suspension and passage of the fifth late filed matter. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. The fifth late file has been passed. Councilor Michelle Wu, Councilor Jackson. And Councilor Jackson moves for suspension and passage of the sixth late filed matter. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it, and the sixth late filed matter has been passed. There are four late filed matters for the consent agenda, which will be added in the absence of objection. Hearing none, the matter is added, and Chair moves adoption of the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it, and the consent agenda is adopted. Would anyone like to pull a matter from the green sheets? Okay, and then we will pause for announcements or statements to the group. I have a few. If no one else does. Oh, Councillor Presley, for what purpose do you rise? Oh, I just wanted to um, wish uh, our colleagues and everyone a happy Father's Day. Um, you know, one good turn deserves another. You often do this for Mother's Day, so we want to make sure you, um, you know, you folks don't feel left out. And uh, so just happy Father's Day um, to all the dads out there and also to the members of our community who are dads but enhance the role of fathers, um, our coaches, our clergy uh, men, um, uh, police officers, firefighters, our teachers, and all the mentors. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Presley. Uh, so just a couple logistical items to tick through. First is an announcement. Uh, this practice has been in place for a while, but thanks to the amazing Carrie Jordan, all of our closed captioning transcripts are now publicly available after meetings and hearings. So um, the captioning that you see on the screens that WGBH Access provides, we now have those text files posted to the um, public notice, archive public notice afterwards. So if Anyone from the public wants to just read through what happened at a meeting, you can do so by going back to that um, item on the calendar. Thank you, Carrie. <laughs> um, and a few updates. Uh, we, we just did a walk through of Faneuil Hall for the summer setup. So thanks especially to Daisy and Carrie and Candice and um, Dave from my office and, and the cable office and property management. 
uh, it's been a lot of people coordinating. Everything looks great over there. We will be there starting in July. Um, two items to note there. Uh, there's no copier over there, so just for late files, if it happens, please try to get it to central staff a little bit ahead of time so you can come with printed copies. Uh, there's a printer, but no copier there. And then um, in terms of hearings over the summer, we will be up in room 801 for hearings. But because uh, there are other city meetings happening there and because the live streaming can only accommodate one city meeting at a time when we are on city live streaming, uh, we are asking for one week notice for hearings and there's a set number of slots. So we had asked everyone for how many hearings you anticipate holding over the summer. We have that many slots and more. Uh, it just takes a little bit more advance notice. So it won't be, it'll be very, very hard, if not impossible to accommodate sort of 48 hour um, notice for hearing. So we're asking for a week and Lorraine will have those slots available. Uh, but you can also do hearings off-site just as, as usual over the summer. Um, finally, oh, there's some, are these questions related to or more statements? I see, okay. Um, finally, we've heard a lot of uh, credit to Kerry throughout all of these things. So just wanted to formally congratulate him on behalf of all of us for winning the, for being a 2017 Shattuck Award winner for the city. And then um, I see a few other lights flashing now, but just lastly from me, um, and I know from Andrea too, thank you all for the amazing surprise baby shower. So, so lovely. Um, I'm very excited. Three weeks to go for me, a couple more for, for Andrea, um, but really excited to add 12 aunts and uncles like that <laughs> to, to baby number two as well. Thank you. Uh, Councilor O'Malley, for what purpose do you rise? Ask for unanimous consent to make a brief statement. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, I don't have anything particularly profound, uh, but wanted to just reflect on the, uh, what happened in Northern Virginia this morning. Um, before this meeting, I was over at the State House. There are some great efforts happening there uh, to try to get the state on 100% renewable energy sources. I was, it dovetails nicely with the efforts we're trying to do there, so I went to support it. And there was a crush of media. And I go to a lot of these environmental rallies and press conferences, and there's not often a crush of media. So I was delighted to see that. But when I was leaving, several reporters stopped me to ask about, as a local elected official, how I felt about what happened. And was I nervous? And I said, absolutely not. This isn't about us. This isn't about elected officials. But what? two things. One, once again, we've seen incredible heroism from the Capitol Police officers that were on site and saved lives and prevented a much, much worse catastrophe that could have happened. And two, what my concern is that how commonplace this is now, we've seen mass shootings in school, in high schools, in elementary schools, in movie theaters, and now as a bunch of people are getting ready on an early morning for practice for a softball, a charity softball game. And it's, uh, you know, the, it, it, it's not really time to be political, and, and it seems like the, all the victims are, are going to make it through well, but my God, we have to do something about gun violence in this country. And we say it all the time, and we send our tweets and thoughts and prayers, and we just have to do something. This is just one more remember. So I, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, and, and you all agree with me, and we've done some great things in this city. But we really, as a country, need to get our act together when it comes to stopping gun violence so that what happened this morning doesn't continue to happen. And that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Councilor O'Malley. Councilor Jackson, for what purpose do you rise? Um, I, I write, uh, unanimous consent to make a statement. Proceed. Um, I concur with uh, Councilor O'Malley, and I appreciate that uh, he took the leadership uh, to acknowledge that uh, we have to stop uh, gun violence in this country, uh, in this state, and also on the streets of the city of Boston. Um, and it is critical that we, uh, at the local level, take a leadership uh, role. And thank you so much for acknowledging that. Um, I did want to uh, acknowledge uh, an event that is happening this weekend. Um, it is Roxbury Homecoming and Juneteenth. Um, for uh, and that is at Franklin Park at 10 a.m. and everyone is invited. It is a wonderful and fun and uh, family-filled time. Um, Juneteenth actually represents a very special day um, uh, post uh, emancipation. Um, it took a little while to uh, travel all the way to Galveston, Texas, and so Juneteenth is actually uh, the date uh, that uh, that commemorates uh, African Americans really being free. 
uh, in the United States of America. And I think it's really critical that we think about that and we work toward uh, economic freedom, uh, social freedom, and justice on a daily basis. Um, but this is a, a very, very fun event. I would encourage everyone uh, to uh, come out. Um, and then also, it is also celebrated on the exact day um, uh, of Juneteenth on the 19th at 3 p.m. at the National, National Center uh, for African American Art, uh, which is on Walnut Avenue. Uh, you actually, I refer to it as the Big Head Museum uh, because there is a bust of uh, Martin Luther King um, in, in the yard there. Um, so uh, everyone is invited. These are all free events. And I just wanted to uh, let folks know. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilor Jackson. OK, at this time, I'd like to ask all councilors and guests to please rise as the council prepares to adjourn today's meeting in memory of the following individuals. For Councilor La Matina, Grace Zuccaro. For Councilors Baker and Asabi George, Robert Bo Skinner. And for Councilors Linehan and Flaherty, Joseph F. Black. A moment of silence, please. Thank you. Chair moves that when the council adjourns today, we do so in memory of the aforementioned individuals, and we're scheduled to meet again Wednesday, June 21st at noon. All in favor of adjournment say aye. aye. Any opposed say nay. The ayes have it. Council is adjourned.